call it to order. Yes, all right. Let us call the meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first on the agenda, uh, public comments. No public comments. Uh, moving on, correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? No. No? Okay. The meeting of the December 12th date, we have minutes. A motion to approve. The minutes? I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of um, December 12th as presented. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Unanimous. On to the first substantive agenda topic review of the annual local and elderly disability benefits program. And presumably that's why you're with us tonight. So Ann, I see that the income limit on the town side, the 48,000, has been that same amount for a, a long time. Yeah. And what is, is there an increase on the states? No, okay. we don't have that bucket on the state side. Right. That's the town side. No, no, I understand that, but you said you, um, we typically raised it if there's been the social security and stuff. Just the bottom bucket. We've okay. All, we've only increased this a, a couple of years. It used to be at 40000 and then we had a period of time where we increased it every year. Um, and as you can see, once we increased it, if you look at the cost of the program, um, actually, if you go back and look at 2011-12 on the lower part here, you'll see we got very close to maxing out the program, mm -hmm. which is why we stopped increasing it, because there was a fear that our most needy would be, residents right. would be affected by us increasing it further and losing a portion of the benefits because I'd have to prorate it. Remind, remind us, Anne, what's the limit again? Is it 2% of the? It, oh, no, it's three quarters of 1% of the prior budget. So it's three quarters of 1% of the So, and so I'm clear, 
Um, the 17.6 goes to 17.7. Everything goes up by 100, but not exceeding. The 48 stays at 48. Is it doesn't. That, I mean, the board can make a recommendation to increase it to the board of selectmen. Then they would have to change. They'd actually have to change the ordinance to reflect mm -hmm. that change of 48,000. Um, you might. It, it's also worth noting that there's currently a commission. Put together at the recommendation of the Board of Finance last year, and my recommendation to them to look at this program. Uh, some of the things that we're looking at, uh, maybe not to change, just to review so that we keep the program as good as we can for all the taxpayers. But some of the things we're looking at is uh, one, changing the annual review date. This review date usually happens in November. Well, I did not get the figures from the state of Connecticut until December, even though this letter says November 22nd. Um, <coughs> we're um, looking to see if the cap needs to be addressed and, and you know, if we have to change the cap or if we want to add a cap because if the state shows out of funding this portion, uh, extending the length of the residence. But the proposal here right now is only for the increase right. to mirror this, but right. to keep the 48 as is. That's yeah. that's the current proposal. That's the current. That's okay. currently what I would like. Um, right. I, it actually sort of, there's different opinions on the ordinance between different town councils over the years. Some think that it automatically adjusts to these rates. Um, I will need to come and ask the board of finance mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what the financial impact would be just by that increase? Uh, well, the second, uh, there's one page that John Sarver has for it. Now, a lot of people, when they're over the limit, they do not apply. But you can see here that we had 52 people apply that were over the limit. And, um, you know, it'd be 52 people more. Uh, it depends on what the taxes are, but it's based on a percentage. Uh, I can tell you from this current program costs us uh, $437,000. Okay, one of the things we look at as part of the um, committee that's reviewing the, the program, a lot of people talk about Bridgefield. Richfield offers a program to everybody, but they have a cap. The cap is $1,048. Last year it cost them $1,720,897 for their program. So. And I'm sorry, Ann, when you say it, qual oh, everybody is eligible, meaning if by income. If you're 65, oh, I you're see. Eligible. Regardless of income. Regardless of income. So, I mean, that's the numbers they're looking at with a small benefit. Well, I shouldn't say small benefit. They have $1,000, $1,048 they get as a benefit. The town of Bethel, sometimes if their income is low, and you can see the low income people get 70, can get 75%. We have 38 people that qualify for Their total tax bill, or is there a cap on it? it? It you can't. You have to pay by the law twenty five percent of your tax. So they get seventy five percent off their taxes. Yeah. Between our program and the state homeowners program, so their state homeowners program offsets the town program. So if they're if say they're seventy five percent with two thousand dollars, and they're going to get five hundred. And the 38 applicants had averaged about 20, like 
2,500 bucks is basically what the credit was for those applicants, roughly. I can't tell you that it's 2,500. I mean, I'm just dividing it by 104,000 is what it looks like that group was, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <coughs> I didn't see John had that number. Yeah, he has yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So this table from the state is part of the upcoming budget year. And yes. so it's good for that amount of time, hopefully. Yes, and these are the these are the income limits that they're going to use for their program. Right. Okay, and we usually mirror those for ours, mm -hmm. and then then there's offset ours by whatever they qualify as, with the exception of the high range. We don't we don't mirror the benefit. We just mm -hmm. mirror. Any further discussion or question? So, and I take it the motion that you're going to ask, you will ask us to entertain is that in connection with the Bethel Homeowner Tax Relief Program, a motion to increase the eligibility limit for the income brackets below $48,000 to match the state of Connecticut income brackets. Is that correct? I'll second that. If you made the motion, did you just make it? No. You, you just stated I it. I was just stating it. Oh. <laughs> I will so, make it if it's <laughs> easiest. I'll, 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 I move to increase the limits by $100 to mirror the state of Connecticut uh, limits with the top amount remaining at $48,000. And I will second that. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I, I do have a question though. You, you talked about further qualifications for this. Is that something you're going to pr pursue further or who's who should be pursuing that? We, we have um, further qualifications. I mean, <coughs> you see, if you read the ordinance, you'll see the qualifications that we go through. Okay. Um, there's a committee right now of, of, that is reviewing this program. It consists of myself, Bob Manfred, um, Bob Kislowski. <coughs> Um, Marty Waller okay. and the benefit coordinator who works with me, John Sarkis. Yes. Okay. And we're currently, I've been putting together facts and figures so that we can look at what other towns are doing. Good. Thank you. Okay. And so <coughs> this means we have to change the ordinance, right? No. No. We do not have to change the ordinance. Okay. All right, cool. It would only be if we changed if we right. the board decided that the top bucket would be changed. Right. So does this get republished or just appended? Uh, we'll, um, Dion will change the schedule and then I have it available in my office. Okay. So we are concluded on that matter? Nope, it's all good. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next agenda item. It's the intention was to have a very brief overview discussion of the coming fiscal year 19 budget season process. In about one month's time, we will be jumping into that process. And so it seemed appropriate to have a brief discussion about what we think we will expect to see and what we're going to have to deal with uh, during that process. <clears throat> I believe that we will be faced with some unique challenges. We have the state of Connecticut's fiscal status to deal with. Um, it's probably prudent for us to plan that that ECS number is going to go to zero at some point in the future, but we'll have to just keep an eye on it and, and, and understand what the state is doing. In addition, the voters of Bethel have told us they want certain investments. They want the police station. They want the public schools renovated. Right, those are our physical uh, assets of the town that they, again, the, the residents have told us they want improved. They want for the benefit of the people who work in those buildings, and they deserve that. So we know we have to 
understand the funding for both the police station and the schools. In addition, we've got some short-term debt to repay. Right, that short-term debt was appropriately incurred during a period where the economy was less certain. While the economy is not where we all want it to be, uh, by all metrics, the economy has turned. And so now is the time to start repaying that short-term debt. So we'll have to, in, in a more kind of aggressive manner, so that we recreate that short-term liquidity in the face of the next recession that comes whenever it, it does come. Uh, in addition, we've got kind of a really unusual interest rate environment. Right? We've got an interest rate env environment that has a flat yield curve. You know, what, what does that mean? It means the cost to borrow short term is actually not that much less than it, the cost to borrow long term. So understanding that interest rate environment, I think we will have to apply our, our learning to understand the best way of paying down that short term debt. Uh, from so those are kind of the factors, the challenges that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, Matt, Bob, Brad, your teams, and f frankly, we have to ask for tremendous help and support from, mm -hmm. from your teams, the entire Board of Selectmen, Bob, Brad, your teams, and the department heads. From an operating budget perspective, I, I think we're going to really need to help uh, get the help from the department heads where they, we may be able to set up some high level parameters saying, look, given all these challenges, this is what the town is telling us and what the numbers suggest we can afford. And we may have to ask the town department heads to fill in the blank, right? So it's a little bit more of a higher level kind of touch from our perspective, taking in all these challenges. Uh, from, a, from a capital item standpoint, we're gonna have to be nimble. Right, we're going to be taking in data constantly from what's going on with the state, what's going on with the interest rate environment, what our advisors are telling us on the debt. So in, in connection with capital projects, uh, I think for the process to move forward smoothly, the folks presenting capital projects w will really need to have do done their due diligence in advance of presenting items to us. J again, just so that when they present, we're ready to make a decision in the face of the information that we have. This board historically has kind of played with, well, do we want a, f a specific form to use? Do we want a specific process? I think this board has, has decided historically not to really use a specific form because each request is somewhat unique. That said, you know, there, there was a form that was bounced around last time for the, from the board. Uh, our suggestion would be people can look at that form to get certain types of questions in their, in their presentation and their due diligence process in, in anticipation of what we are going to ask for those, uh, you know, for those projects. So again, it, this was just an attempt to kind of raise the early warning flag that we've got some challenges facing us that we really haven't had to deal with in the past and that may likely require a slight tweak in our process. So I wanted to just mention that to, to all the teams and, and get ready to make it happen when, uh, when we start sitting down next month. And so I just wanted to kind of get people's thoughts on that, questions or? I'm just um, curious uh, how we make it out with the budget books and have you met with the department heads and? We start tomorrow. Start? We're on schedule. Cool. And Bob, have we gotten any communications from the state about? Anything new? Yeah. No. Okay. Nothing at all. So at the very least, we got to start with last year's numbers and maybe cut it back a little bit. Okay. And, and then maybe I'm just kind of parroting Wendy's question. How about um, capital plans? Have those submissions been been made? Are folks starting to think about the due diligence okay. behind the, they're the they're asks? Under, they're under review now. So okay. we'll do the department and the capital budgets tomorrow at the same time when we meet with each department head. Okay. For the current year, you know, the year that we're in right now, I have our revenues, um, what were projected? Are we like in good shape with the stuff that we can control? Well, right now the grant list is not due until January 31st. Right. So until then, we won't know exactly where we're sitting. Okay. And Tax Bob, is that collection rates yeah. good and they're yeah, always, you guys, you guys yeah, have been, oh sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Do we get to keep it? People, people doing good tax planning? You know, I mean, it's hard since the numbers are so skewed just yeah. in December, it was far above what we 
in December, you know, but that's because there was definitely a run on people to pay <laughs> the current year, but it's still all current year taxes. So sure. the end, you will be probably right on target of where we were starting. Got it. So January 31st, Bob, or thereabouts, we'll get a certified grand list? Yes. She has to submit it to the state at that point. Okay, got it. I, Brian. It, it may be too late this budget cycle, obviously, but you know, I talked about it last year where I think it would make sense as a board prior to even going into these, give an idea of where we want these budgets to come in and it gives everyone a better playing field. If you say, look, we think a 2% increase is all we could afford this year, keep your budgets in line with that, people are less shocked and there's yeah. not as much disappointment because you know what you have to work with. Again, it might be too late in the season, but I think as a board, that's something we should be gravitating to. So we're not going through line by line by line by line and listen to the budget presentations and say, look, this is what we said we could afford and let the managers figure out how to get it done. Absolutely. Matt, I mean, is it is it too late in the process for fiscal year 19? Well, it's not, but um, I want to go back uh, to something that occurred back in 2010, so long before you folks were on the board. We have a unique charter that requires every department <coughs> to present to a joint meeting of the Board of Finance and the, and the Board of Selectmen together. So regardless of what the number turns out to be in the end after the Board of Selectmen massages it and sends it on to you, it's been our policy to let the department heads present all of their needs to you. It, and it, it, that really, I mean, to be very blunt about it, that freaked people out the first year we did it because if you just looked at year-over-year -year numbers, it looked like we were asking for an 11% change over the prior year. That, that, that wasn't the case. Um, because we have a charter that was designed, I think, wisely so, to allow a full disclo disclosure and a full dialogue so that everybody knows what the needs are, even if you say, okay, we understand the need, we're gonna, we're gonna have to cut it back. Uh, just, just keep that in mind that you're, you're going, you may see numbers that are not in conforming, not going to be conforming with a target initially. But you know, we'll do our best to get there after it goes through the board of fine or goes through the board of selectmen before we vote it. There's going to be a lot of changes. Okay. I, I guess my point was not to say we're not going to listen to. Obviously, you have to give people the courtesy to hear their needs are. Yeah. I just think as a board, we need to get away from us saying this line is cut here. The, oh, it's yeah, a total absolutely. number where we want to be and let sure. you know, management decide where those numbers come from. I, I but agree we with still that. have to vote oh, absolutely. on each yeah. account. Mm -hmm. Oh, ab ab yeah. absolutely. I'm just saying, long term, it's look, this is what we could afford. Managers figure it out. Absolutely. I mean, that's the, you know, for us to say you don't need this in this line sometimes, it, you know, we don't know what the inner workings are of each department. Uh, well, absolutely. using that same analogy, that they have the right, or when somebody presents a budget, they not just present it with, oh my gosh, we only can do a 2%. They have a responsibility to their office and to the future. So if their projections or the, the running of their office carries forth an increase for a future item that will help them responsibly run their office, I feel that they have a responsibility to present it and we have a responsibility to listen to it and consider it for funding. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I mean, at some point there's a bottom line that the town can afford, is all I'm trying to say is, especially with the uncertainty in the state, you know, capital planning, I mean, I think they do a 10-year strategic plan already, right, where they're Correct. supposed to look out 10 years and tell us these are our needs Correct. over the next 10 years so we can, you know, Bob and you kind of strategically mm -hmm. tell them, look, this is the time to ask for this. We, you know, look at it. I'm not ever insinuating that we shouldn't listen to people yeah. and let them make their arguments. I think the social service director was a prime example last year. We added that to the budget. We now have a full-time social service director. So I, I have no issues with that. I just, I think it's, it's better though that we <coughs> have an idea where we want to land because it, it just, <coughs> at the end of the day, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the town and the taxpayer. <coughs> and to make sure that we're not increasing our spending at a rate 
that's going to get us into trouble down the road. Yeah. The way the way I describe it to people is this board yeah. is uniquely positioned to assess all of these challenges, <coughs> right? The information that's coming out right. of the state, what the voters have told us regarding the investments that they want, how to deal with short-term debt. We are uniquely position to interpret the yield curve on the interest rates and what to do with mm -hmm. debt. So we are uniquely situated to, tell, to, to help stay very close to what the Bethel voters tell us, what we can, what we believe the town can afford, mm -hmm. and then the department heads mm -hmm. at your all's mm -hmm. kind of guidance will tell us what they think is the best way to spend right. that money. But then to answer your question, no, it's not too late, and I welcome the strategy and, and the targets to work with. I think it's the right way to go. So um, <clears throat> I, I agree. I agree with that. I think it's a great approach to to at least give a framework because regardless of um, what, there are different ways to move money around within a department. And I'm just, you know, for me, just, and I know the department heads know what they need, but there is a point where there may need to be adjustments in. Um, not to take away services, but to, you know, within the department. And we have to be, I think each department has to be creative in how they, you know, manage the budget within that department. So, that, you know, I mean, we all have things that we know would be, make it a top shelf organization, but sometimes we have to, you know, especially even, even if temporarily, because these are, they're uncertain times right now with the state and other um, factors. So I just think we have to maybe look at it a little bit differently this year. Matt, Bob, Brad, w would it be helpful to have another special meeting in advance of the first go round of budget proposals to see if we have more information, more clarity around these challenge points? Well, we, we already spoke to the department heads. We had a staff meeting last week, and we pretty much told them uh, uh -oh. the concerns that the Board of Finance would have that, you know, and I did use a 2% number. I just threw it out there. So, you know, they are aware that they're uh, looking at the budget a little bit uh, sharper. Uh, and, and most of the budgets really are coming in either the same as last year, flat, or lower. Uh, the only place that it's going to be going up is uh, negotiated wage increases, which they're not responsible for. We put those in. You know, so if we've got a contract that says they're going to, their employees are going to get two and a half or two point seven five percent increase, that's going to indicate the the increase in that budget. Okay. Outside of that, I mean, most of them are flat or lower. Okay. And so it'll be up to the board to figure out strategic things with your all's help and support about things like, do we want to start putting sinking funds? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, those types of additional yeah. expenses that hopefully you know, right. ameliorate troubles down the road. Mm -hmm. Right. D depending okay. on how the numbers come out, if we detect, if we see that there's some latitude, we make recommend, we might make some recommendations on that. Great. So yeah, but all, by all means. But to answer your question, I, I, I don't think it's necessary that you trouble yourself with a special meeting because we're going to go through the, all the department presentations anyway. Okay. So you've got plenty of time to talk about a target that you okay. want to give us. So. Okay. Great. Right. Any so further good. discussion on this item? Okay. Um, moving on to the consideration of acquisition of a paramedic vehicle. Okay. Uh, about... I would say uh, six weeks ago, our third paramedic vehicle went down, the transmission blew. Um, we need three on a road because we, our services are uh, a joint effort with uh, the town of Ray. And as soon as uh, one vehicle is out on the road, the second one comes into place, and then the third one sits on the border, so to speak. Um, so we've got three vehicles always at any particular time ready to go in an emergency. Um, we looked at possibly repairing it. It's a 2006, uh, has over 140,000 miles on it. It's a former police vehicle, so even though it has 140,000 miles on it, the engine has a lot more um, uh, use because those cars are always on, they're, ne they're never shut off. Um, and um, besides the transmission going, when the fleet management looked at it, um, brakes are shot. There's wear and tear on uh, the uh, frame, uh, 
it really shouldn't be on the road. Yeah, it's, un it's unsafe. It's an unsafe vehicle at this point. So um, we have Captain Pugnan and myself approached the Board of Selectmen, who approved uh, the purchase of the vehicle along with additional um, um, items that have to go into it. And uh, the total cost is, it's on a state budget, the total cost is around $48,000. So um, um, they approved it right before the end of the, the year, I think it was December 29th. And we're coming to the Board of Finance now for uh, the approval to uh, go ahead with it. Now, is that a, a purchase or a lease, Bob? It's going to be a lease. It's a, um, a three-year lease. And the funds would come from? Well, the funds, it's a separate, it's like an enterprise fund, so uh, the town would fund it, and then it goes into the do-to-do-from, and then from there, as the funds come in on um, a paramedic program, it would reduce the, uh, the amount that the paramedic program <coughs> owes to the town. How much is the lease compared to the equipment? So you're talking about buying all new light bars, new... Not stores. all of them. They were able to take some light bars off. In fact, I think the light bar is going to stay. Uh, and if it's not from the old vehicle, it's from one of the other ones they were going to um, uh, trade in. So there, there was a lot of uh, equipment that they, they took off other vehicles in order to save some do, money. Do you know what the cost of the lease was? Um, it's, it, the total cost is going to be 48000 but the, the cost of the car is around 37. 37 yeah. yeah. And what type of vehicle is it? I'm just curious. Uh, is is it like, it's like a police uh, SUV Tahoe type vehicle or something? No, it's, I think it's an Explorer. Explorer. Or no, it's, 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 I think it's a Tahoe. It's a Tahoe. Tahoe. Oh, they did go with the Tahoe. It's a 2007 uh, Chevy Tahoe. I have a question. Um, when you said that the lease would go into the Tahoe, does that mean that the lease that we're going to have to pay for that lease is going to be paid for the Tahoe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the paramedic program is not, it, it's, it's part of the budget because we fund it to the extent of 275000 but we don't stop at two seventy five. If the, if the program needs 300000 325000 the town will support because you can't stop the program. I just don't recall it as an item. I don't recall it as a line item. Is it in the... It's in there. Yep. It's a paramedic okay. program. Okay. It's called a paramedic and program. And, and is this um, an emergency appropriation or why wouldn't this just go into the budget presentation or the budget for the because they need the vehicle now right so this is an emergency exactly. appropriation yes okay and like I said this this occurred about six weeks ago six seven weeks ago so we've been deficient one vehicle for six weeks well I mean if uh, whenever we needed that third vehicle it came out of Danbury Hospital oh. but they're not going to allow us to continue to do that indefinitely mm -hmm. I mean we're, we're <coughs> responsible for the vehicles and do we do the upfront expensing of this and then it goes into the program so we get some of this uh, back? Is that the way it works? Well, whatever it's, whatever it's, the funding of the program is shared amongst writing. Well, correct. I mean, yeah. we're, we're going to sit down with uh, the controller and also the first select woman in uh, Bethel in uh, Reading yeah. next, next week or the week after, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to work an arrangement where they will uh, support us on part of this. Mm -hmm. And also the other vehicles as well. Historically, what's been that um, the proportion? The volume is about 22, 23 um, percent. Excuse me. I recall that when we were um, talking about a park and rec vehicle, that um, isn't it true that the Board of Finance, that you can lease and not get approval from the Board of Finance? So if you're going to lease it, that's why I assumed acquisition meant buy. Because no, I, mean, I believe that with the park and rec, am I wrong, Matt? We did. We did lease the park and rec vehicle. But I mean, we could have done it that way. Uh, I'm not right. sure if two yeah. days ago, two and a half years ago, we had to get number, which is number one now. Um, and we did come to the Board of Finance for approval, so we just followed the same procedure. I mean, right, if we didn't have to, then no, I'm okay, just saying then we don't that have to do we it. Did that. We did that for the park and rec, but at the end of the day, uh, we were told, well, you know, we can go lease it anyway. We don't have to ask you. Well, so Park and Rec probably have the money we in their budget already. You know, they had the funds they to correct. add. Correct. Well, to add to the lease, you know, because they have the okay. revenue coming right. in. That's all I'm saying question. is that they probably had the money. It's a little different it. question. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, so I, I understand. I guess when you look at it that way, that goes into their budget, their yeah. actual budget. Okay. It increases the department uh, amount, all right, whereas this is a, a total amount that goes into a paramedic program 
and uh, the cost to or the due to or the due from goes up and down during the course of the year. We receive payments from the different firehouses for the call volumes <coughs> during the, each month. So about two months after the call has taken place, we get a reimbursement for um, uh, the use of the vehicles. Um, um, does, do, does insurance, like from individuals, insurance cover or reimburse anything for? For something like this? Yeah, for Not for a vehicle that's not for a vehicle that's um, 140,000 miles in the transmission. No, no, I don't mean like no, you, that. I mean for the you mean, trip. You mean health stuff. insurance? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. That's part of the revenue stream that comes back. Okay, right. mm -hmm. thank you. And Bob, the lease is three years or four or five? It's going to be a three-year lease with a buyout, dollar buyout at the end. So it'll be our vehicle anyway. So it's bumper to bumper yeah. for years, and then we can This buy one it. will become the number one vehicle. One will go two, two will go three. Do you know what it was on the state bid to buy it? Just outright? This is on the state bid. No, I'm just saying to buy it out. To buy it outright. If you just said I want to buy the Tahoe outright right now. Well, I, th I think it's around thirty-eight thousand dollars, thirty-seven thousand, somewhere in that range. <coughs> I don't. I go without the without the light bar. Right? Oh yeah, without the light bar and everything else, all Thanks. the other equipment. Have we always leased the paramedic vehicle? The last two we have. Yeah. Okay. When they when they started the program on. Twelve oh, years ago or so. Two thousand six, I think. I think that this was the one that. The this, transmission this was, the first one. this was the original vehicle they started with, with uh, from the police. So long term, you'll buy it out. Yeah. yeah. You'll buy the lease out. It's a mm -hmm. buck out. But it doesn't make sense just to buy it up front. I mean, does it make sense to buy it just now rather than lease it and then have a buyout because you're going to plan no, on buying it? Cash flow, we don't have to put up all the money at the, you know, I mean, it's costing some interest, but at the same time. I'm just curious how much, and that's why I said how much is the lease. <laughs> Versus, 10, versus the purchase. Well, my, the, my, the lease my is twenty five thousand. Yeah, my understanding of how these products work, and I have some experience. I have some experience in these buckouts. It is functionally the equivalent of buying the car, and you just take a loan. Mm -hmm. The one dollar lease buyout is really just a formality. Oh, so that's what it is at the end. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's that's what I was trying to ask. Are we, yeah. you know, are you leasing, and then what's the buyout at the end? Does it make sense? So it's like no, a three-year so loan. It's a, it's a capital uh, yeah. loan, really. Yeah. Yeah. So way to infuse. Big departments use it to infuse a lot of vehicles in their fleet. Mm -hmm. Bob, kind of continuing along the lines of what Cynthia was asking, just to bring it home, it's the paramedic intercept, if I'm understanding it correctly, is under the intra-government agency yes. subsi subsidies. Mm -hmm. It's budgeted for 275, but we really don't kind of settle that up until after yeah. the year, right? It's, right. Am I remembering well, that correctly? We fund or? it, all right. And okay. if you remember, not this year, but the year before, uh, we paid down $100,000 on it. Um, was it that on the transfer station? I forget. Yeah. Yeah. So forget about Same it. Same concept, though. Right? But, but, you're but any any surplus during the course of the year, we would go back and say, okay, let's mm -hmm. take. 50 of that circle is 100 of that circles and bring it down. It's just a loan between the town and, and the enterprise fund. Fair enough. Yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, we settle it at the end of the year because you never really know what the call volume is going to be and yep. what the exact right. reimbursement numbers are. Right. It, it fluctuates. It depends on how much is uh, private health insurance versus Medicare and Medicaid because there are different reimbursement rates for all that stuff. Okay. So in, in the end, I, I guess the way we should think about it is that if – reimbursements are high, calls are low, whatever, but it turns out that the program is running in the black, yeah. well then that's just going to add to the fund balance. Right. If it runs the other way and it runs in the red, it's going to take away from the fund right. balance. And where's okay. the money coming from, Bob? Where are we taking it from? Right now, is this like capital non-reoccurring? Mm -hmm. Right we now, we, we'll, we'll uh, purchase it through the enterprise fund of the, the paramedic program, but essentially it's coming out of the fund balance. Aren't you? And then they have to pay us back if they can. That's right. Yes. It it's like the transfer system. station kind of that's similar. That's right. okay. But it doesn't, or the utilities. It, it doesn't hit what you still mm -hmm. have in capital not recurring. That's, right. that's still different. Yeah, this is coming more from the general. Yeah. Right. Got it. Okay. okay. It's, it's when it comes down to it's a loan between the town and, and uh, the fund. Mm -hmm. It's going to get paid back. Yes. Yeah. Just because no three interest. years, we don't five, five years, years whatever, we'll get it back. <laughs> we know where you live. Yes, we'll bank we'll find you. Yeah. Any other question or discussion? I make right. a motion. We need a motion, yeah. I make a motion to approve the lease of the paramedic vehicle. Up to 48,000? Uh, what is it, Bob? 40? 40, 48. What did we use? What did the Board of uh, Selectmen, you, you should follow the exact Why don't you just say 49,000? Because there's not to exceed 49,000. Not 49, to exceed 49,000. Yeah. Okay. It'll be less than that because it's on the contract. So I don't have a copy of it right here. 
I think we have to approve what you approved. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like 47, 682 yeah, or something. Do we need the number or can we just say no, the Board of Select? No, going to go grab it from the minutes. It's, okay. I think so well, we could just say well, the amount that the Board of Select <laughs> Selectmen <laughs> approved. Okay. And you could, I mean, for the sake of the minutes, I think we should have the exact amount. And I can look, you know, we can look up the minutes online. It's like what we feel right now. So we're back to. I think it's 47,672 uh, in my memory. We have a right here. Was it up to 48,000? I thought, but I'm, I'm 64. Don't rely on my memory. <laughs> I've got it. When did you do that? What month? 1229? Last? 1229? Or maybe 1227. It was the Friday before Friday. Mm -hmm. You were in. Yes. You were on yes. It was the last. The 23rd. 48, oh. 767, 49. That's the number I make my motion. And I second Brian's <laughs> motion. I'm sorry, Dan. One more time. 48, 767, 49. Okay. Good deal. Thank you, you very much. You have to get Brian to repeat it. Okay. He made the motion. Who signed the order? 48. 67. 49. Excellent. A second of that motion? I seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Who, who, who made the motion? Brian made the motion. And I second. Wendy seconded. seconded and unanimous. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Comptroller's report. Okay. Um, Yesterday I emailed uh, the reports. Um, I do have copies, so I'll hand those out. But, um, this is uh, at the six month point of the year. And uh, when you look at them, I mean, pretty much everything is in line. There's certain accounts, again, um, if you look at the probate court, they look like they're, and it's a small, small account, but they look like they're over $3,000 at this point, but it's a, a joint venture between the town of Richfield, Reading, and Newtown, and, and Bethel. Uh, so that gets um, zeroed out for the most part at the end of the year. Uh, insurance is, um, uh, where are we, 80, 81% spent, but a lot of the insurance work is comp and the liability is, is spent up front. Um, You may see the exact same thing in employee benefits with uh, the medical insurance. And so for the most part, I mean, it's in line. I mean, if you look at the department totals, there are some of them are 47, 50. It should be somewhere around 50%, 50, 51, 46. Uh, this might be a good tool to, to uh, use during the budget season because, I mean, essentially you could double these numbers and that's what the, you know, the year-end number would somewhere come out to be. So. <clears throat> but for the most part, um, there's nothing that really pops out and causes any alarm. So. Bob, how about the revenue side? Pretty much the same. Well, the revenue is probably up a little bit, and because of the not December sure if this collections, includes everything yet from uh, December. No. I mean, because yeah. In fact, when we went to do the uh, public utilities uh, meeting last night, I didn't do a report only because the numbers weren't reconciled yet for sewer and water. And there just wasn't enough time. So uh, we're in line with the, the, the receipts. There's no question about that. Yeah. Co contracted services on public works continues to be high, right? That's the review of site plans and things like that. Well, that's, that's going to be, yeah. Um, and if you look at planning and zoning, planning and zoning, is, uh, the contracted services is pretty high. But that's, that's um, right PS doing all the site work. Uh, inspections. They're just public work seems to be high, and I just wonder if that's something we need to look at in the budget. Because every year we're over. Last year, weren't we over by quite a bit? Mm -hmm. It was like 150 percent. You know, I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to continue to be that high because we just brought on board yesterday a utility supervisor for uh, the utility department. So that they may, even though it doesn't really affect this side, it may help. <laughs> With, with his work because he's going to be now a town employee maybe some of that what's happening here he may be able to take on um, the public utilities yeah. director you mean can review the utilities like the, the utilities. he can find the water laterals and all that stuff mm -hmm. for yeah mm -hmm. was that done like professional services before that or yeah the contracted services yeah contracted services yeah 
Um, so, if you have any other questions on this, uh, the other thing is um, we'll be starting the, the budget process next month. The first meeting, I think, tentatively is scheduled for the 13th. Well, I'm going to miss most of those. So, yeah, we were. I think we were going to try to see if we can move something to a Wednesday. Wednesday meeting on the. The 21st, I think it is. Um, Who's the one you want to meet? So. <laughs> okay. We, we were aware of the conflicts that okay. you have yeah. Tuesdays and Thursdays through the end of May. So I think yeah. the honest. Class gets done at like, I think I get out at 7 10, so I might be able to come late right. from Sacred Heart if I boogie. I might right. be able to make some of the ends of the meeting. Dion was going to look to see if we could make it work. We'll At some point, we'll get that tentative schedule maybe redistributed and we'll go from there. Early. Okay. Um, to your point before, when you were speaking about the budget with the short term debt and the long term debt, uh, I did check with the, our advisor. Um, we're going to, in June, we'll refinance the short term debt again. Um, we'll see exactly how we're going to, whether we're going to bond part of it. Or just roll over for maybe even a shorter period of time, like four or five months. Uh, but the rates right now are looking like 1.5. Long term is 2.5. So that variance has really gotten close. Squeeze. So that's nine months. I mean, months. three years ago. Hmm? Nine months at 1.5 is the short yeah. term. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 1.5. It's a coupon of maybe one and a half, two percent for a, a year term. So the, the interest is a little bit less, but. Uh, you know, you look back to like three, three years ago, three and a half years ago, it was 10 basis, 11 basis points. Right. Yeah, and now it's one, you know, we got 119 just recently in October, but it's going to be around <coughs> 150. So, you know, when it was 10 basis points and the long term was 250, it really didn't make much of a, you know, you, you really have to go for the free money at 10 basis points. <laughs> you know? uh, but now it's getting closer. And so maybe we should bond it for 10 years or 20 year period. And what are we at, like 26 million in short term debt or something like that? No, it's about 23, 22 and a half. 22 and a half. Yeah, but uh, that's not million. including the PD. No, that includes the PD. That's the PD on Yeah, because 22. we added the PD this, this yeah. past time because we needed the money in order to fund the, the construction of the. But, but we can't bond the high school at this low interest rate yet. Not I mean, yet. the. Uh, the no, Johnson. because when you, when you bond, you have to use 85% of the money within 18 months. Oh. Otherwise, so we're just the IRS comes in and yeah. says, we're going to hit you with a penalty. So we should expect a higher interest rate when we go it could bond be. the money. Well, but, not, but maybe not long term. Yeah, not necessarily. What, what I mentioned earlier, we have this strange interest rate uh -huh. environment where it's flattening out. The long term rates don't seem to be moving as much yeah. as the short term sure. rates. So, you know, knock wood, we may luck out. On the, on the school. And Barry, Barry even had in one of the emails that he sent back to me, he said, you may want to wait to the fall to bond rather than do it in, in June. Because if you go into the fall, then the debt's not going to be due until 1920. The year, you know, fiscal year 2019-20. Uh, um, so you gain an extra year. And you're pushing out that 20 year term, actually an extra year. So, you know, we, we have to look at, you know, what the budget's going to be this year and next year. How the, the, the state is going to uh, pair out to us, and, and maybe we could use that extra few months rather than going long term in June, go long term in October, you know, and then we get another year on, on the, the payments. So, um, you know, we'll look at that too. But once we go long term, you're locked into that. You're locked payment. in. You can't make any prepayments. You can't make any prepayments. You know, uh, as I had said before at uh, other board of finance meetings, I keep I try to keep the debt around four million dollars a year. So the long-term debt has been falling off. So short-term, I've been raising, and we've been paying down more debt. But the problem is, we have a lot of projects in town. So, you know, we we, we borrow 1.5, and we're paying down 1.6. So it always seems like you know we're really not we're going against the the waves. You know, but it's it's better to do that than just let it kind of rise out of uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have Again. a quick question about your report on page um, nine. And it's just curiosity as far as the health department of uh, 5213 contracted services. And I'm just curious, what does that comprise and why would there be so much available? 
Because I don't even know what that what that is. Well, you know. Well, that deals with Laura Vazil. She does a lot of the septic plans, sanitarium. She has to review. She, I can tell the you that, that she she works a ton of. It's only twelve thousand dollars. Uh, she works. Uh, yeah, she works. She she really works. works. She works. No, that's. I think she's at the account seventy-seven thousand. She works. Um, it, it it always um it always works out that way with her. Okay. Um, yeah, well, yeah. But I mean, we did cut the budget back a little bit last year on the contracted services. I think by about twenty, maybe twenty-five thousand dollars, and um, maybe she's. Um, she, she doesn't have there a system, right? There could be certain right? things during she, the year that aren't happening now and may happen in the springtime. There are mosquito control. Yeah. Um, I think uh, she might not have all the bills in for the flu season shots, but, you know, from the from the lake. Well, I know I know there's a bill outstanding right now with the Bevel VNA, mm -hmm. and we asked her to sign off on it, and she's going back to VNA to get, you know, because it used to be that's twenty thousand dollars or that's seventy thousand okay. dollars, seventy seven. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to give them four payments of five thousand dollars during the course of the year. Now we have them justified to us. What did they do for? And it's not five thousand dollars. It's an actual number of services that are being performed. Okay. You know, uh, either flu shots, blood pressure, or whatever it happens to be. And um, so that bill's outstanding. So that could be. Uh, it's less than five. I think it's around forty-two, forty-four hundred. So that would add to the twelve-seven. Okay. So if I see that number, I'm going to ask because that's all. Awesome. So, okay. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Again, Bob, thanks. That's really helpful. Good information. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, uh, I, that's like an ejection, like a parachuting. You took I have another meeting to get to. I told you that. You took care of business. You're talking to me. You're talking to me. No, I, I we have no, no new business, sir? <laughs>